Okay, this next effect is called the clock arithmetic routine and it involves this swapping procedure that we saw earlier in the series, okay? So let me go ahead and demonstrate it and then we'll talk about how I accomplished what I did, okay? So I have here 16 cards, as you can see. I have 16 cards I've grabbed from the deck. And um, now because we've actually shown you the cards, we probably better mix these up here, okay? So I want to mix, you know, I saw them, you saw them. Um, the goal actually of our activity today is to test the quality of your decision making, okay? So it's actually important that you not remember where things are. So uh, would you like me to stack left on right or right on left? Okay. Uh, why don't we go ahead and deal into four piles uh, just to be safe here. Uh, I don't want you to maybe remember anything about these cards. Now you want me to stack left to right or left to right? Okay, that's fine. Okay, maybe we'll do one more just to be safe here. I just don't want to compromise the integrity of our test here. Okay, you want me to stack left to right, right, left to right again? Okay, that's just fine. Okay, very good. So let me just set that down. Oh, I should mention that I have a written prediction over here and I'm going to leave it in camera view the whole time. Okay, so that you know uh, nothing, no funny business has been carried out, right? Okay, so how are we going to test your decision-making abilities? Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to deal these out again. Boy, these cards are <laughs> really getting scrambled here. Okay, there you go. So I have two piles of eight cards in each. Okay, two piles of eight. So what I'm going to do is just give you a whole boatload of choices. So because we have eight in each, you're allowed seven swaps. Well, what's a swap? A swap is where you take the top card and you move it to the bottom. That is a quote swap, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and have you allocate those seven swaps however you would like, okay? It really is your choice. So how many would you like me to allocate here? You, you have up to seven of them. You want three? Okay, so three here and then four there. That's just great. So one, two, three, three swaps. We have four left. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then we'll set aside, uh, set aside this pair. I'll just put it over here. Okay, now we're down to six swaps left total that you can allocate to these piles however you would like. How many do you want here? Just one? You sure? Just one. Okay, just one. One. And then we have a bunch of work to do over here. We have five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's six all together. We'll just set aside that pair right there. Okay, we're down to five swaps. How would you like me to allocate those? Zero? Are you sure? Zero here and five there. Okay, your choice. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll set aside that pair. I'll go like that. Okay, we're down to four. So you have four swaps. Two, two and two. Okay, that's kind of, whoops, sorry. That's kind of nice and orderly. So one, two, very good. And then one, two. And that will bring two unique cards to the top that we'll set aside. I'll put it right there. And now we're down to three. You want two, two here, and then one there. Okay, that's how that, sorry about the paper sliding. Uh, one, two, uh, let's see, one, two. <laughs> we're done, sorry. <laughs> and then one here. Okay, very good. I don't know how to count. These are big numbers for my brain here. Okay, you're allowed uh, two swaps. You want one on each? That's a nice way to go. One swap there and one here. Very good. That brings us a pair to the top. And now we're down to just one swap. Where would you like me to put it? Sure. Here? Okay, very good. I'll put it right here. And we'll set aside that pair. Now this, there's only one pair left there. Okay. 
Well, how do we know if you are a good decision maker? Okay, I'm really hoping that you used your intuition with those choices and didn't rush to judgment as to how you should allocate those. Well, I have a prediction over here. And after years of doing this very routine, I can predict, well, I think I can predict, what your choices will lead to if your choices were good choices. Okay, wow. <laughs> we're both under pressure right now, aren't we? <laughs> okay, uh, prediction. All the pairs will add to 16. Hmm, let's see how we did. All, I'll leave my little paper there so you can still see it there. All the pairs will add to 16. How did we, let's see, five, now Jack counts as 11, right? Yeah, that adds up to 16. What about these? Oh, that's clearly 16 for the total, right? You're doing well. Oh, <laughs> nine and seven, 16. Good job. Four and a queen, very good. Oh boy, that's a fail. That is a fail. Hmm, I was really hoping that you would get the, one of the highest scores or the highest score possible, but it looks like you're not going to quite make it. Oh, okay, you pulled out, a, pulled out of a nosedive a little bit there. 13 and 3, yeah, that's 16, all right. Uh, 4 and a queen, yep, 16. How about this one? 10 and a 6, that adds up to 16. Well, you did remarkably well, okay? So my prediction said that all the pairs will add to six, wait, wait a second. I do remember that I wrote something on the back here. Except for the red aces. Is that what happened here? It did indeed. All of them add up to 16, except for those silly red aces that are left on their own. You nailed it. I had forgotten that I had written that on the back. You nailed it. You got 100% on this choice-making test. So anyway, that's the, that's the effect. Um, as I've mentioned before, you can come up with your own narrative as to how to frame this. Okay, that's one I thought of just minutes before, as always, minutes before recording. I thought, well, maybe I'll do it like this and see how it goes, okay? So if you give it a bit of thought and maybe more thought than I did, you can probably come up with something better than what I've just done there. Okay, so how does this work? Well, what was needed, and you know, we can't, um, in the boot camp series, as you know, we can't go too deep into the mathematics always with these effects because the videos, well, that's what the Hidden Structures online course is about. Um, but just recall, we're, we're in a good place right now, by the way. So the, the, right now in pairs, they're adding to 16. This is a good place. In fact, this is where I started. Um, in, in terms of building the deck, or the packet, this is what I did. I built these very pairs, actually. We've actually recovered the very pairs that I set up. And then what I did was, you'll note that this is, quote, an AMP relative to cards adding up to 16, except for this pair of red aces. All of the other pairs add to 16. And that's what I've written on the paper. I said all of the pairs will add to 16, and then on the back, except for the red aces. So this is an AMP relative to the pairings that I have in mind, right? Well, I need a mirrored structure for the clock arithmetic routine. I need it to be mirrored. So all I did was the same sort of thing that we've done in the Max Maven constructions. I just performed an over-under, or you can do an under-over, mange shuffle. This positions those cards in a mirrored relationship. 
And so this is actually, let me just move the paper. There's probably no reason for the paper here. Uh, this is actually the kind of thing that I showed you at the beginning. Now it won't be the exact same order, but it will be a mirrored packet. Mirrored in what way? That if you look at the mirrored pair, so 6 and 10 add to 16, queen and 4, 16, king and 3. Oh, there's the two red aces. That will be the exception. Queen and 4, couple of 8s, jack and a 5, 16, and a 7 and a 9 is the 16. Okay, so just think back to what I did. So I, I said, well, you know, we, we both saw these cards, which is true. So I, I think to make this fair, we, we better mix these a bit. Well, this is a mirrored packet, and I'm performing the LR shuffle. Well, the stay stack principle says this mirrored structure will remain. It won't be harmed. The cards, however, are being permuted, but the mirrored structure remains. That is the key. It's still mirrored. Okay, and then I even did four piles. Well, this is still the stay stack principle. Okay, stay stack principle. And it doesn't matter. You can stack from left to right or right to left. Okay. And then once you're convincing the spectator that the cards are sufficiently scrambled, that no one knows where things are, and that is actually true. I have no idea. I, and I suppose that when we saw the cards, and if we were geniuses and could track all 16 as we were doing those shuffles, then I suppose theoretically you could know the exact composition of the you know, exact order of this packet. Uh, but that would be a superhuman feat, I believe. So anyway, so I have no idea like what's on top or bottom. Well, there you go. I know that's on bottom, you know. Oh, by the way, what would have to be on top? Remember, this is mirrored. If nine's on the bottom, then seven better be on top because we know they add to 16. Um, so at this point, it's ready for this swapping procedure. So we just need a couple of mirrored piles, and that's what these are. Okay, so if you remember how this works, is the top card here is related to the bottom card there. Related, the relation here is that they add to 16, or there are a couple of red aces, right? Okay, and same thing here. This one, whatever it is, is related to the bottom one here, and it is. Their sum is 16, okay? So because, because, in fact, we may have actually talked about the mechanics of this in terms of under, seeing why the swapping procedure actually works, but if you think about this mirrored relationship, if we now, see we have eight and eight here, if you allow seven swaps total, what it does is it brings companions, so right now they're like, like this one's on top and it's companions way down there in the bottom. So if you perform the swaps, what, what it does is it brings them into alignment. So like this one, we can picture up here, this one's down there. And so as you swap, you're slowly bringing those two into alignment so that at the top, you take off these pairs that add to 16, or they're both red aces, okay? So I think the mechanics of the swapping procedure we've actually touched on earlier. So anyway, that, that's kind of the setup for it. So you just need uh, uh, pairs that add to 16, except for whatever pair you want to violate that pattern. And this is a common magician's trick to say, oh, such and such is going to happen and it doesn't quite happen and then you turn the paper over and it says except for and then it covers the exception perfectly okay so that that's kind of a ma magician's trick to pull on the spectator okay so that is the clock arithmetic performance